Welcome back. Um, in the last video, I showed you a lot of the different the feature set, basically, of, of um, our world. Uh, maybe I forgot to show you that you can go to the wiki page here um, and get some information about uh, different things. For instance, if you wanted to know more about the sensors and actuators and how to use them, or uh, how to treat different challenges, a little bit about the Python uh, bindings, and uh, a little bit about the customization guide, and maybe uh, an area where you can see, find other tutorials as well. Okay, um, well, at the end of the last tutorial, I asked you to try to get your robot to basically move forward and stop whenever it sees 100% intensity uh, uh, um, on its color sensor. So, uh, for instance, again, if I just make a program where my robot is told to move and never stop, then it will start to move and I can see the intensity change as it passes over white areas and black line areas. Um, and uh, I know that uh, the sensor seems to be working. I know that the program is working, but it's not doing much. So uh, now I can um, decide on how to, to change. By the way, if uh, it bothers you that every time you click reset, reset the, um, the world view changes, uh, you can go back to using uh, uh, the arc view um, which you know will maintain its its position uh, for the robot, and you can still use uh, panning motions, etc., to to set up the world. Okay, so um, like I said, we want to be able to uh, stop whenever we see white. So let's do some coding now. Uh, you might have done this differently than me. If you did. Um, you know, you feel free to skip to the end of this tutorial uh, where we tell you the next challenge, or you can uh, just see uh, the difference between uh, my solution and your solution. If you had some uh, challenges, then you know definitely view this part, and uh, you can you know get some hints on and how how to think about you know using the the code and the platform and the different blocks. So uh, we already have a move tank. Uh, to begin our move forward. Uh, so all we need to do now is get a stop block. Uh, how do we stop? We go back to motion and we have a stop moving and hold block. Um, uh, stop moving has also a coasting and brake um, and you can uh, experiment with the differences uh, but just like in the Lego world um, if you know coast would allow your robot to you just uh, stop the power but whatever um, power was left uh, from from moment, the momentum of the robot um, would continue to uh, uh, rotate the axle of the motor as opposed to braking and holding which exert uh, uh, some uh, force against uh, a continuous continuing motion of the motor um, but you can test those and see which one you'd want to use and which uh, scenario in this particular scenario it doesn't really matter but I'll stop and hold uh, so if I run this now, uh, well, now I don't see any movement because uh, I tell the first instruction is to to start moving, and immediately after, without any time or rotation in between, I tell it to stop moving. Uh, obviously, not good enough. So we need to put something in between. Now uh, you can be clever and maybe use uh, sleep. Uh, for however long it takes you to see that the robot will get to the white intensity area. Okay, there, my robot works. When I got to 100, it stopped. But that's not really the intent and purpose of this algorithm. We are trying to use the readout from the sensor to decide when to stop, not just stop after, t you know, when we know uh, the amount of time it would have taken us to get to 100% intensity. So that's not fair. <coughs> Remove that. Uh, by the way, you could have done that also with um, this kind of block where we can uh, move for one second um, or two seconds, whatever it was. But again, where uh, that would defeat the purpose of the algorithm that we're trying to um, simulate here. And the algorithm is that whenever the sensor tells us that we're at 100%, that's when we stop. So here's the sensor block. Um, it's not a sequential block. It's uh, more of a, you know, uh, a numerical output block. 
so uh, we can't use it to just a tag on here we need to find a place to stick it to um, one of the other things we want to verify that is that we are on the right port for reading color sensor all right uh, I'm just putting it here for now just to see uh, so that it's uh, got opacity uh, but we can see that it's a reflected light intensity mode there's other modes for the color sensor not going into those right now and a port that we can choose from uh, okay your EV3 uh, board would have only four ports but you might know that you can extend those uh, using certain techniques so um, for now we just want to make sure that port 1 is our where our sensor is connected to there's two uh, fast ways to do this number one is you could look at your python code and see uh, where is the color sensor bound to and we can see it's bound to input one which is our port one another way to look at this quickly is to select your robot uh, we have the single sensor line follower already selected and check its description where it says which sensor is on which port okay so we can see it's also on port one in here and so we're happy if it stays on port one Great, now that we have the color sensor um, block, um, you know, one thing we can do quickly is maybe we can just print it just to make sure it's behaving the way we expect it to. So we go to text, uh, the text tab, and we picked out a print block. And instead of printing ABC or some string, I will print the output that comes back from the color sensor block. And if I run this, I will see something appear here. It's a one. Uh, even though my sensors here show me three, my color sensor shows me one. Maybe we want to make sure really that it's working and not returning like a true or something like that. So what we can do um, is uh, maybe print one as we follow uh, a straight line. Uh, so uh, instead of stopping, we can let the robot continue going and continue printing um, our, our sensor output. Uh, by the way, um, this is where printouts go. It's the console area. Uh, you would also see errors uh, here, um, errors in, in, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, coding errors, um, if, if there's syntax errors of any kind, or runtime errors. And once you maximize the console, you get the scroll bar on the side, so you can scroll up and down uh, and see all your printouts. And every time you click reset, it maintains the console, but if you want to clear it, you have to press this button. Okay, so going back to the block, uh, let's remove the stop. We don't want to stop anymore. Uh, we just want to print all the time. Uh, this won't work because while it will continue to drive forward, while it will continue to drive forward it will only print the intensity once so that's no good we need to keep printing it over and over and over again uh, basically the robot keeps moving because we haven't told it to stop but um, we've only told it to print once so here comes some loops um, let's start with the while loop and we'll use a while loop to create a forever loop uh, and how do you make a while loop a forever loop well you say while always true and we have a way to get an always true uh, using the logic tab to get a true block. Okay, so now we have a while true, which is sort of the same as saying repeat forever. And forever, we're going to be repeat, uh, measuring the color sensor from our sensor and printing it out. And let's see what we get from that. Okay, so we can see the intensity is changing, and we do indeed get um, different numbers from uh, 1 to 100. Um, and so while it's maybe not behaving 100% the same as the color sensor tab here, I do see that it's uh, sensitive and that it's, uh, it looks like it's giving the right readings. And when we don't see anything uh, underneath the sensor at all, like just space, then we'll, then we'll start seeing zeros. Okay. Uh, again, uh, now I can uh, scroll up and down and I can... Um, uh, clear uh, the console area. So we have a forever block, we have a print. The only thing we don't have is a stop. Stop on 100%. So let's get our stop back. And now somehow we're going to need to be able to break out of this um, block, uh, forever block, uh, when, when, when we're done. There might be other easier, simpler, or uh, more obvious ways for you to do it, but this is um, 
uh, I'm going to choose to do it in the in this fashion. But again, there's no right or wrong answer for this. It's just uh, my preferred way. So I'm going to add an if statement because it's a condition that we're trying to uh, simulate here. The condition of the color sensor being 100%. So <coughs> I'll remove the print for now. I don't need it anymore. I know that it's. I can expect that it works. Um, uh, but now I do need uh, some way to compare you know, this output to 100% so I can uh, attach it back to my if statement. By the way, this if statement is just a simple if then, but if you wanted to add else ifs or an else, uh, you can only add one else at the end, obviously. You cannot add more than one else, but you can add uh, as many else ifs as you would like. So you can construct a complicated uh, conditional statement using that way. Uh, currently, we just need the most basic if then. And uh, to shut this uh, little window for uh, constructing the conditional, you can just click again on the on the blue to open it and to close it. So uh, again, I don't want to just say if color because that makes no sense. It will only uh, stop when I'm in space and I and I get zeros because everything else will be treated as a boolean uh, true. So what I really want is a comparison block and logic will have what I need. I can see this equality, uh, but I can also use it to change it to uh, a less than or a greater than or a, a different type of inequality. Uh, but in this case, I do want an equality because I want, I want to know when this is equal to 100. Now I can type inside this area, it expects a numeric value. So I'll get that from my math tab. This is zero, and I can rewrite that zero into 100. So now I know when I get 100, I'm going to go into my then uh, uh, block area here where it says do, if do. And um, what I want to do is uh, I can kind of stop right there, but then my loop will run forever, and it, maybe it will be forever stopping. And it's not necessarily what I want. I want to kind of exit control of the code at that point. So uh, if you go back to loops, you'll see that there is a break out of loop statement. And I can use that to just break out of the forever block and get onto my stop moving, which is just the next thing to do. Let's test. So I'm going, going, going. My intensity is growing. And when I get to 100%, my robot has stopped. Um, and I've uh, come out of the code. Um, I've come out of the code. I know that uh, not from my print console about the fact that this has changed from a stop to a play sign. And um, that's it. And that's how you would have done that. If you had done this already, uh, or if you had some trouble, or if you can think of different ways to do it, uh, by all means, uh, change the code and make it uh, do the same thing in different, uh, using different coding structures. But I just like using this particular way to, uh, to do uh, what we're trying to do. The next thing I'd want us to try to do is um, to do a line following. Uh, we kind of have all we need to know now to do line following algorithm. We have the we have the loop block which allows us to you know make decisions um, throughout the lifetime of the program and we have the if block and the color sensor block and the comparison block so we can test for different color uh, sensors light intensities the reflected light intensities so with all of that now we can talk about a simple line following algorithm so uh, a line following algorithm usually chooses uh, at, le at least the one with a single color sensor will usually choose uh, a side of the line to follow we can't know when we see white whether we're on this side of the line or on that side of the line unless we make an assumption about which side of the line we're going to always follow. So in my particular case, uh, I will be following the line from the right hand side of the line. So that means whenever I see white, I'm going to try to find the black line by moving left because I'm assuming I'm on the right side of the line. And whenever I see the black line, I'm going to be trying to move away from it so that I don't cross it back into the right-hand side of the line. So um, when I see white, move towards the left. When I see black, move towards the right. 
That means that really I'm not following the line itself, but rather the edge of the line, this right hand edge of the line, right? That means I'm not really following the middle of the line. I'm not tracking like the, 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 the middle of the black line, but rather the edge of the line. So that uh, whenever I'm on the right hand side, I move towards the edge. And whenever I pass that edge and move into the, into the middle of the line, um, intensity goes down and I would move away from that middle of the line and go back towards the edge. So I'm always you know, turning into the edge and turning um, uh, into the edge from the white area and turning into the edge from the black line area. If for some reason I pass to this side, well, my code tells me that when I'm on white, move towards the left. So I will move further and further away from the line, possibly going around in circles. That's, that's just an assumption you have to make using a single color sensor um, uh, unless you're, you have some other information about the environment and where the line is compared to that environment. For instance, if you know that the line is at um, uh, you know, x uh, axis around uh, between 1 and negative 1, then you can, you, you know, you can do other things. Um, but that's not necessarily line following. That's GPS, um, array, uh, uh, GPS following. You can, you can also use, if I'm on white, go uh, right, and if I'm on black, go left. Uh, that doesn't change anything about the algorithm other than your expectation to be tracking the left edge of the line instead of the right edge of the line. But no matter what, uh, using these, this kind of algorithm, you're always tracking an edge of this line. So now I want you to try to do that. So the simple algorithm is if I see white or any intensity greater than 50, let's say, uh, move towards the left. And if I see uh, any intensity less than 50, uh, move towards the right. So um, that's it. Uh, and, and if you prefer to track the left edge, do the opposite. When you see any intensity of color less than um, 50, move towards the left. And any intensity greater than 50, move towards the right. And if you're wondering what to do when you see 50, um, well, it depends on your, how you write your if and else statements, or you can write a greater than or equal to. Um, but that's not, nothing to worry about at this point. Uh, one of those cases should cover it if you're just using an if else. That's it. Uh, now you can uh, stop watching these videos for a while and do this on your own. Go to your block. Uh, you have all the basic uh, things that you need. You just need to change this if statement to an if else, uh, change the equality to uh, an inequality, uh, a comparison, and uh, make decisions about movements um, other than that. Um, you won't be breaking out of this loop for, for, this, for this segment, um, so you can remove the stop and you can possibly remove the top bit. Um, you'll, you'll be doing everything inside here. And really the uh, challenge is to go left, right, left, right, um, uh, along the edge of the line, bend with it until you reach the end. And when you reach the end, you'll fall off the other side of the table. That's fine, that's the goal. We're trying to get the robot to reach all the way here and it doesn't know to stop at that point, it'll just fall off. If you fall off the table on the other side uh, by having followed the line and not just going straight or making some other silly thing, um, then you will have uh, completed the challenge. So good luck.